This is the Microsoft Cloud Show, episode 121, recorded live March 30th, 2016, coming at you live from the Build Conference in San Francisco. Welcome to the Microsoft Cloud Show, the only place to stay up to date on everything going on in the Microsoft Cloud world, including Windows Azure, Office 365, SharePoint, Exchange, Link, and related technologies. Just the information, no marketing, no BS. I'm Chris Johnson. And I'm Andrew Cole. And we're just two dudes telling you how we see it. The Microsoft Cloud Show is sponsored by Valid.nl. Valid is a Microsoft Gold partner whose mission is to enable its customers to excel in their business through the innovative use of technology. Valid is always on the lookout for consultants, architects, and engineers. Do you know Azure, BI, and Analytics, .NET, Office 365, or SharePoint? Look them up on Valid.nl. Yo, AC. Hey, CJ. How's it going? Uh, well, if it's a little noisy, you might hear uh, build conferences going on in the background. <laughs> yeah, we, we say it's recorded live from build, but I guess you're live at build and I'm live back in Florida. So, uh... <laughs> I guess so. It's not entirely the whole story, is it? And it's not even live. Like, this is recorded. So. <laughs> exactly. Well, right now it's live. I think that people are going to listen to it tomorrow. I guess so. So, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's day one of the build show and uh, I'm sitting down here at the Moscone West Center in, uh, in San Francisco. And uh, we've had the keynotes this morning and it's about lunchtime on the first day of build. So, um, we thought we'd catch up and, and talk a little bit about what, what landed in the keynote this morning and anything else that's going on and, and uh, update our listeners. Absolutely. Sounds good to me. So what was your big feeling about the day one keynote from Bill? So day one was all about Windows and personal computing. So what Microsoft are doing with Windows 10 and, uh, and, a, and a new refresh that's coming out soon, what they're doing with tabling and things like that that we'll get into in a second. But for me, the big one from a developer point of view is the universal Windows app platform, right? So being able to build apps, one, and run them everywhere, that was definitely the theme of the show on day one. Yeah, that was what UWP. So that was the big thing about being able to build apps. They they said that they've got some updates that are coming. We'll talk about some of the different updates. We'll keep this episode short. And just also as a FYI to everybody, um, CJ's on conference Wi-Fi. So the call we made, like I mean, we just heard him cut out just for about a half a second just a, a, a moment ago. So we're trying to get this to you as quick as we can. So the connection may not be the best, but uh, yeah, I know one of the, it was around the universal windows platform. So it was talking about building things on windows, on different devices, on Xbox and stuff like that. So I know on the windows piece, the big thing that they led with there was announcing that there was a, the windows 10 anniversary date, which will be sometime this summer. They are having a, a big update that's coming out for windows 10 that they did a lot of spent a lot of time highlighting some emphasis on the inking part of Windows. And so they had the big piece that I liked about it that I thought that was really interesting was this little like virtual ruler that you could have on Windows 10 that you can use two fingers to kind of move it around and then like one finger to either slide it horizontally or vertically and it stay, it keeps its you know orientation. But that's really cool. We, we, there are other products that are out there that do this. Like I know Adobe and Apple have sold ones that cost something like $100 to have an additional hardware device that sits on top of the iPad to do these like horizontal lines. But this was a software-based thing. It was pretty cool. You don't, have to, you don't need anything new to, to get this to work. It'll work straight on your Windows 10 device when they ship this update out. Yeah, I think the biggest takeaway for me is that Microsoft spent a lot of time focusing on touch-based apps for fingers and things with Windows 10 in the past. And now they seem to be putting a bunch of effort into pen support all over again. It's like we're back in the in the early 2000s with tablet PC. So, you know, this is not new for Windows, but it's sort of it's interesting that they're focusing on it again in Windows 10. Yeah, agreed. I mean, there were some they showed some cool demos where they pulled up like a, a, a 3D map of Mount St. Helens and they drew a little path and showed the the path that you would take to to hike up to the top of Mount St. Helens, and then he did a couple little push pins along the side with some annotations like this is where we'd stop and have lunch and this will do a picture. And then he rotated it and you could see how the ink subsystem was smart enough to know that it was a 3D map and it actually kept it like in the elevation, the different push pins were at the correct elevation and not like just like floating in air, like a couple hundred feet up or something. So it's pretty cool, pretty cool little demo. Yeah, I think the big one for, for developers in the announcement was Bash, the Bash shell coming to Windows. And the cooperation with, uh, is it Canonical that built uh, Ubuntu? Yes. To get that done. So I think this is a, this is a big deal for Windows developers um, and for developers that want to be more productive on Windows. And the Bash shell is, uh, is a big deal for them. So um, 
So that's uh, that was really nice to see too, and I can't wait to have a play with it. Yeah, I I would too. I'm looking forward to seeing. That. I, I haven't seen anything that says like when we would see it or if it's part of this big anniversary update that'll happen this summer. But you know, we've got we've got the command prompt. You've got PowerShell on Windows. We've already got some Bash emulators like the Commander app that you can run on Windows to get the same kind of Bash experience. But they made a pretty strong point that this is you know pure Bash shell that's running straight from Linux that's running right on top of Windows. It's not in an emulator. It's not done any kind of a virtual machine or anything like that. It is the, they've done some, a lot of work to get Linux working inside or Ubuntu working inside of Windows. And uh, this is, these are the native bash binaries. So there's some, I did see an article up on Hacker News from one of the guys from Canonical that talked about the stuff that's currently working and that's not working yet and how they're still working on it. But uh It'll be, it's, it's a nice addition. I, I like the fact that Microsoft is, is doing more stuff to help people who are not currently on the Windows platform come to the Windows platform with the experiences that they're most comfortable with and that they're most useful with and not forcing them to learn a, a Windows you know, metaphor or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So um, also some other announcements around um, the building a desktop app converter, which uh, which will help you convert desktop applications to take advantage of some of the more modern API surfaces in Windows, which um, is kind of interesting. My host app developers with older apps sort of come to the party when those ten of it there. And basically, you know, it takes in an app and it spits out an AppX that can easily be an AppX package file that uh, can easily be submitted to the store. So they're, they're trying to make it easier for developers to get this stuff into the store as, as well as getting the material that. And they also talked a little bit about the, the store for business. So there's not only just the public store, but there's also going to be a business store for enterprises to distribute apps as well. Yeah, they, they did a really good job here, I thought, with highlighting how they're trying to get people get to the win, the universal Windows platform. And the way they did that is by putting out that this converter that can take in a Win32 or a .NET application and can make it actually run inside of a Windows 10 environment and be registered in the store. And they even showed how they've got nice kind of like cross-communication with things like taking a, a Steam app. I believe it was Age of Empires that they took and showed how it was uh, showing the number in the live tile. It was showing the number of online users that were currently playing Age of Empires through Steam, but showing it on Windows 10. So that was pretty cool. And I know I kind of going along with that cross-platform dev experience or be, being able to make things work on Windows 10, one of the other things that they did was they talked about a new mode with Xbox. And so you'll now be able to take your current Xbox One that you have or one that you go buy at any kind of big box retail store. And you'll be able to download a new app straight from the Xbox store that will allow you to enable dev mode. And what that does is allow you to use your Xbox as a real dev platform and being able to test things out. So you can build these universal Windows apps. You can build them on your Windows 10 laptop. You can then deploy them over to your Xbox to be able to see how they run and everything and still be able to do dev for your Xbox, but be able to do it when you're disconnected from your Xbox, like when you're on a plane or something. So this is something that's, that's uh, they've been promising and they've been talking about for a while now, being able to build apps using the same skill set that you have today and getting it to run on, on top of Xbox. And so it's nice to see this uh, come to fruition. Yeah, I was kind of surprised they didn't spend more time on, on the Xbox dev stuff, the Xamarin acquisition and tooling aspect of it. So maybe there'll be more tomorrow tooling stuff. We'll see. Yeah, agreed. And I know one of the other one of the other big updates that they did, and we we haven't seen too much about this. This is kind of a, a quick little announcement and kind of a punt to tomorrow's, I think. But they today they released uh, Visual Studio 2015 Update 2. So um, that's already available as we're recording this. I've already pulled it down within about 20 minutes of the keynote ending. So got some nice goodies in there. I'm not exactly sure what's in there. I haven't and that's the part that was kind of strange is in the keynote, I haven't stayed up too much on what's been in the release candidates and stuff. And so when they just said, hey, it's announced, it just kind of seemed like a almost an aside that someone ran on stage and yelled it out and then ran off. But <laughs> Yeah, no, I agree. And so in summary for me, I think like there'll be more cloud news tomorrow for sure. And uh, we'll definitely stay tuned for that. Day one felt, for me, like super light. So um, it wasn't the greatest. But tomorrow, I think... Um, 
with Azure and uh, and Office in the mix, we'll see a bunch more cloud news. Yeah, agreed. The, the other thing that they did talk about a little bit today, the other kind of a big announcement, they spent a lot of time about this towards the end of the show, was they, they talked about, about HoloLens and they talked about bots and Skype bots. And this concept of bots, what, what you can do with it is you can, essentially, they're, they're there to kind of help you have a conversational experience with an existing system. So they showed like a reservation system. The demo was is that if you use anything like like Slack, Slack already has a bunch of these bots in it where you can talk to them and then they can respond to you. It's like some pre-canned kind of responses, but also adding some intelligence. So for example, the example they had was that a lady was talking to someone on Skype who said, hey, congratulations on getting accepted to, to or get invited to uh, speak at this conference. And they had a, it was a bot that was running in Skype. It, could, it picked out this one conference. It went and did a lookup, found out when the date of that conference was. She was able to talk to and pick pre-canned responses. So like when it said, do you want me to make a booking for you? Do you want to you want to stay at a West End hotel? And then it hooked up to the West End bot and it handed off a bunch of information to the West End bot. Things like the conference is from, let's just pick a date, April the 10th through the 14th. I think Actually, I think that might have been the date of the conference. And when she uh, she said, they said, do you want us to book a room for you? And she said, yes. And then it respond, the bot responded back do you want this kind of a room? And it gave her a couple different options. She picked the room and it said, okay, you want me to go ahead and book it? Yes. And then that bot was able to hand off some stuff to figure out, hey, I know that these are people, or it works with Cortana and Cortana can figure out that, you know, hey, we know that you talked to this one person in this city where the conference is. Would you like to reach out to them and connect with them? She said yes. And what it did then was it actually sent her a message on Skype and said, I'm going to be in town on this day. Would you like to get together? So it was it was a neat kind of a little experience, and it's even it's there's a lot of stuff that's already built in. The bot stuff is already built into Skype, on Skype on iOS, on Windows Phone, and on Windows. I presume it's going to come to like OS X uh, in the coming weeks or months or whatever. They didn't give much detail on that, but what they did say is they did kind of build off of that and say that there is this whole thing called the Microsoft Bot Framework, so that you can build bots that know how to talk to like the Microsoft system. So you can talk to things like Cortana, you can use with Windows 10, with Skype, and you could hook up existing bots that you have, like if you've built something for, say, Slack, and you could use the the Microsoft bot framework to connect that bot into Windows so that you could have this nice kind of cross-platform kind of experience here. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what developers do with this and what kind of things they come up with. Yeah, I'm worried that it's going to be a passing fad and uh, that we're all going to hate bots in 12 months' time. Yeah, I, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. They're, they've got some really good use cases, but I, I don't know if I needed a bot framework to work with stuff inside of Windows. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. So I know the other the other last announcement that I saw that was big was that they spent a little bit of time with HoloLens. They showed a couple demos, one with a, a, a medical college showing how that was how that could be used. They also essentially did the same demos that they did from NASA. Yeah. And I know that they've, they've got some stuff that set up the Jet Propulsion Lab and the Mars experience to where you can see that when you're there at build. But the big news, I think, around HoloLens was that, hey, HoloLens starts shipping today, the dev kits and everything, for people to start actually using them. So that's been a long time coming, but it's nice to see that they've hit that date. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I could hear everybody holding their breath during that announcement, waiting for the Oprah moment, but uh, it, it wasn't to be. <laughs> Yeah. When that guy came out on stage holding the box of the dev kit, I was like, yep. are they going to say, look under your chairs? It's like, no, no, no. <laughs> wasn't to be. So, uh, no, that, that's pretty cool. I can't wait to get my hands on one and try playing around with some development on it. I might do that while I'm here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I know that to me, did you have anything you want to else say about uh, today's? About today's keynote or what you saw so far today, or is that, I mean, that's everything that I saw in the keynote. Yeah, that was it for me. I, I was actually really surprised at how cloud light it was. I think a lot of that will come tomorrow. So, I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, agreed. So tomorrow is supposed to be, I know it's Scott Guthrie, and I expect that we'll see potentially like people like Mark Rosinovich up there. I know that Chi from the office group is supposed to get up and talk about some stuff as well. So I'm expecting tomorrow to be all about like the dev day. So yeah. uh, Visual Studio, .NET, .NET Core, open source, Office, Azure. That's what I'm looking forward to that keynote. I, I will say that I, I this was one of the more kind of flat build keynotes that I think I've ever seen. It was I was really surprised at it being a, a developer event yep. at as, as flat as it was on the dev stuff. But I mean, it's only the first day I thought that if tomorrow's is better, I kind of would have swapped them around because you want to lead strong, but I don't know. That's what I thought too. That's what I thought. I'm uh, holding my breath for tomorrow. We've got 
we've got friends that are going to be on stage. Yena from the office team is going to be up demoing. She's going to be talking about the Microsoft Graph and connectors and all that sort of stuff. So um, there'll be lots of good cloudy goodness in there for, for the office world. And also we're going to get, you know, Rusinovich and Guthrie and all that talking about the Azure world. So that'll be really, uh, really nice to see too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I got a lot of, a lot of hopes for tomorrow. So I guess with that, anything else you want to leave for our listeners, CJ? No, I'm good at this end. I will, uh, I will try and take some more notes for tomorrow during the keynote and we'll get back to you with more news tomorrow. Hey, sounds good. So it's a quick episode this week. I know we, we're going to drop another one tomorrow. So hopefully everyone, I guess by the time you listen to this, the day two will be underway and, Make sure you don't try and listen to this the same time you listen to the keynote. Or if you do, just listen to our recap. Because we'll, we'll do it for you. There you go. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. Well, hey, CJ, have a good time in San Francisco, and I will talk to you soon. Will do. Cheers, mate. If you have a question for us, go to microsoftcloudshow.com forward slash questions, where you can submit it as text or record it as a wave or MP3 and provide a link so we can play your question on the show. You can subscribe to us on iTunes by searching for Microsoft Cloud Show or via RSS at microsoftcloudshow.com where you'll also find a full transcript and show notes of each episode. You can also find us on Facebook searching for Microsoft Cloud Show or on Twitter at MS Cloud Show. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.